Hey everybody, it's Tom Woods. I just read an article in Salon talking about the first Republican primary presidential debate of 2011, which will take place in South Carolina. And I mention it only because the author says that if Ron Paul should declare himself a candidate for 2012, then at that debate, he will probably say his usual crankish stuff about endless, expensive, unchecked war and the gold standard. Yeah, that's crankish. Now, of course, it's crankish by definition, according to the establishment, because anyone who adopts positions outside that glorious spectrum that runs from that great statesman Joe Biden all the way to that genius Mitt Romney, well, I mean, anybody who adopts positions outside that spectrum must be a crank, according to the establishment. If you're adopting a position that isn't even mentioned by CBS News or Newsweek or U.S. News and World Report or Keith Olbermann or Chris Matthews or Bill O'Reilly, well, then there must be something wrong with you. That's the only explanation they can come up with, and that's the routine they go into all the time when they have to deal with somebody who refuses to place himself between Joe Biden and Mitt Romney. So the gold standard, that's the usual one they attack. Ha, ha, ha. Only an idiot would support the gold standard. We all know that the monetary system we have now is just super, has no flaws. Well, most of the people who are going to criticize gold pretty much have like a two or three sentence knowledge of the history of the gold standard. I, was in, I think I'm being generous. More or less their version of history runs something like this. That under gold, well, we had terrible financial bank panics all the time and terrible boom-bust cycles. But since we got rid of that terrible system and now we have a central bank overseeing a fiat money system, well, things have just been wonderful. It's been all sunshine and lollipops. Well, this is more or less the opposite of the truth. And at the end of these remarks, I'm going to put up on the screen a resource page that will corroborate everything I'm saying and give additional uh, intellectual ammunition for Ron Paul's position, which is completely correct. And is, of course, never refuted. They just dismiss it as crankish, which translated means we have no idea how to answer this guy. So let's just try to dismiss him as best we can. Uh, to the contrary, every one of these financial panics was in fact caused by deviations from the gold standard. You can see that every single time. 1819, 1837, 1857. It is clear in every single case, as, as I'll show on that page. 1857 is barely a blip on the screen. And then the so-called Long Depression of the 1870s. Well, most economic historians now, looking at the data again, are now arguing there was no such thing. This is a figment of the data of erroneous data, misleading data. In fact, Christina Romer, who was a chief economist under Obama, so therefore obviously not a supporter of the free market, she's done important research showing that data that seems to show that the Federal Reserve System has given us such wonderful stability as compared with the terrible instability of the 19th century, these statistics are extremely misleading to the point of being useless that they overstate the instability of the past and understate the instability today for reasons, again, that you can find out uh, on my page. Well, also, let's consider after the 1860s, we had several bank panics in the U.S. What's the cause? Well, a key factor is unit banking laws in the states that say that each bank can have only one office. They're not allowed to branch. What does that mean? That means each bank office is necessarily fragile and undiversified, and so therefore extremely vulnerable. Now notice that Canada had none of these panics. Well, Canada also didn't have the debilitating regulations that the U.S. had in the form of the unit banking laws. So now was it that Canada also had a central bank that helped it through these types of situations? No, to the contrary. Canada didn't get a central bank till 1934. Also, under the gold standard, people used to be able to, you know, save for the future by just accumulating gold and silver coins, which, when they served as money, increased in value over time. Whereas today, you want to save for the future, only an idiot would pile up green pieces of paper, Federal Reserve notes. We all know they're going to lose their value by the time you retire. So everybody is forced to become a speculator and go into the financial markets, where most of us have no business being, and just cross your fingers and take your chances.
So how about the war issue? Well, it's true, Ron Paul dissents from the bipartisan foreign policy consensus. Well, that's pretty good in my book, since I think it's a pretty good rule of thumb that pretty much any bipartisan policy consensus is going to be wrong and idiotic and evil, and the foreign policy consensus has been no better than the domestic policy consensus. In fact, Russell Kirk, who is probably the most significant thinker in the rebirth of American conservatism after World War II, agreed with Ron Paul on foreign policy, as you can see in his remarks in the early 1990s regarding Middle Eastern foreign policy even then. He agrees with Ron Paul completely in every particular. So what are we going to say? Russell Kirk is a stupid idiot who doesn't understand conservatism, and he was a left liberal because his foreign policy didn't consist of saying, USA, USA. Well, no, I think what's really going on here is, unfortunately, a lot of otherwise decent people have been misled about the nature of conservatism because they've been listening to too many neoconservative radio talk show hosts. So unfortunately, a lot of otherwise decent people wouldn't know real conservatism if it punched them in the face. So Ron Paul is the crank. But meanwhile, here's what isn't crankish, according to Salon. Uh, how about having entitlement programs that are underfunded by an amount that's greater than the GDP of the entire world? Nothing crankish about that. How about having the TSA stick its hands down your pants, looking for heaven knows what? That, nothing crankish there. How about the president having the power, as Obama has indeed claimed, to assassinate an American citizen just on the say-so of the executive? Well, no, well nothing crankish there. Uh, how, about, uh, how about bombing a country? and killing, well, maybe hundreds of thousands of people, displacing millions more on pretext that any 12-year-old with an internet connection knew were phony. Well, nothing crankish there. No, you know what's crankish? Peace and freedom. Well, I think that tells us a lot more about Salon than it does about Ron Paul. Now, I put up some resources backing up the things I've said in this video. You can check them out at tomwoods.com slash ronpaul. And you get a lot of stuff about the Fed, gold, war, conservative foreign policy, all this sort of stuff I put together on that page. Thanks for listening.